just worship God. Ah, huh? with the fruit of your lips, just worship God. God, you're able. God, you're awesome. God, I love you. God, I praise you. Uh, you got 10 more seconds, God. Oh, there's nothing I can do without you, God. We learned this morning you've been our Ebenezer. You've been our help, God. Hey, I choose to worship. I choose to worship. Let's just give God a hand of praise as you take your seat. As you take your seat, listen, man, we, 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 we got it. We got to move. But worship is a choice. And I just encourage you to make the right choice. Right? Like, like the Matrix, right? Red or blue pill. You got to choose the right pill. Worship. Right? The world will have you do it another way. Marcus, the world will have you wanting to fight. Put Vaseline on your face. But you got to choose the worship. Okay, y'all don't want to be real with me. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Listen, we, we're in a new month. A new month. The title, we're dealing with forgiveness this month. And it's Pentecost Sunday. So we're going to also deal with that. But the word may not sound Pentecostal at first. Right? So we're going from the book of Luke. The book of Luke chapter number 23, verse number 34. And I'm going to read it from the Passion Translation. The Passion Translation. It says, while they were nailing Jesus to the cross, he prayed over and over, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. The soldiers, after they crucified him, gambled over his clothing. Wow. Now, now, now li listen to it. This is the Passion Translation. Usually we think about that he's already crucified and he says this one time. But look at what the Passion Translation says. It says that while they were nailing him to the cross, he prayed over and over again, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. Let's pray. God, we thank you. We praise you. We celebrate you. God, teach us to forgive. Though the enemy wants to make it all hard and difficult to do, God, forgiveness is really an act of worship. It's an act of us releasing responsibility. <laughs> of someone who offended us into your hands. So God, we just give them to you. We give them to you. So God, today, let the healing of the message lead families to reconcile. Let the healing of the message lead relationships to reconcile. Let the healing of the message let help jobs and coworkers reconcile. Forgiveness is an act of worship. So we forgive like you forgave us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Listen, the, the series this week, this month, is the F word, right? The F word. And um, as an elementary school counselor, I'm fascinated by words that students call bad, right? If you go to a first grade class, they'll come up to you and be like, Mr. Bradford, somebody called me the S word. Now, in my mind, S word, cuss word, because Minister Armwood told us there are only five. I'm thinking it's a four letter word. But when a first grader says S word, it's a six letter word. Somebody called them stupid, right? It, it, when they say, you, you, you got a one year old, so by the time he get three or four, he gonna be like, mama, mama, Nicole, mama. He gonna call you Nicole, mama. Somebody called me the D word. He gonna be like, somebody said D-A-M-N. He said, no, they called me dumb, D-U-M-B. What I learned is, the more mature you become, the words that you consider offensive also evolve, right? I also learned in my study, because you know I like word study, that this F word, this four letter F word that oftentimes we say is the big bad word, that's your uh, joker, that's your big joker. When you pull out the F word, you really mad, right? Okay, y'all don't know the F word, okay, never mind. Maybe y'all don't, I'm, F word is what makes movies rated R. Right? You PG-13 with all the other ones, but that F word will make it R. Okay, y'all still not with me. Okay, gotcha. But that word is not of English origin. That word is actually of German descent, and it's only been about since the 1500s. 
Now, there was a period between 1895 and 1925 that it was banned from use because of its vulgarity, but it's not the worst F word. The worst F word goes back to biblical times, and that is the word forgive. It, 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 is, a, it is due to a lack of forgiveness that Cain killed Abel. It is due to a lack of forgiveness that Esau and Jacob separated for several. It's, it's due to a lack of forgiveness that the brothers of Jacob ended up putting him in a pit because they couldn't forgive him for being the favorite son. It, it is because of a lack of forgiveness that Saul chased after David for years, all the way really to his death, being angry with David. And the reality is that for many of us, forgiveness is a bad word. That's the word that most of us won't say or participate in. Now, we want an apology, right? We want somebody to say, I'm sorry, but never do we take it upon ourselves to offer forgiveness first. Woo -hoo! Right? We want them. They ain't apologized to me. I ain't forgiving them, they ain't say nothing to me, but here's what we find in the text. Jesus takes it upon himself without the prompting or apology of the people who are persecuting him to ask for their forgiveness. See, here's the main idea of the sermon, right? I just wanna say it and then we'll get to the word. The main idea of this sermon is simply this that forgiveness is such a powerful act that the enemy seeks to demonize it. But Jesus demonstrates the need to forgive as a sacred act of worship for the release of strength. But we got to wrestle with a couple of things first. First thing we got to wrestle with is why is it so hard to forgive? Here's the first reason. You ready? Because forgiving means we are releasing our offender from repaying their debt. That, that, that's the real reason it's hard, right? Because I'm releasing you from repaying. G Jesus, it says in verse 32, says Jesus is crucified with two other thieves, which means Jesus is not guilty of any crime, but he's being crucified. And they owe him an apology, but when he says forgive them, he is telling God, because really that word forgive in the Greek is a word dealing with money. It deals with this idea of owing a debt. So when he says forgive him, he's saying, listen, you good, right? You, you know that's hard for us because if somebody owe us 50 cent, joker, if I see you, I want my money, right? Right, one of my boys posted last week was Black Biker Week, but one of my boys posted on Facebook, he said, every Negro that owe me money going to Black Biker Week. <laughs> <laughs> because we keep account of that, right? In fact, to be honest, y'all want to be honest, when somebody owe you money and you see them coming, you excited because you think they're about to pay you, right? Be, be honest, I know y'all don't want to be real, but when they on their way, when they text you, you think they're about to say, ooh, cash app coming. But they be like, uh, can I borrow 50 more? <laughs> so, so the first thing is you're releasing. You're saying you're good. Now, when you release them from a debt, that means you can no longer burden them about it. You can't bring it up no more. Why? Because they're released. Okay, okay, yeah, I got you. That, that was difficult. Here's the second reason that forgiving is so hard. Because we're innocent, yet we have to take ownership of the issue. Jesus was innocent. Yet the text says in verse 33, they nailed him to the cross. M most of the times I don't want to forgive because I ain't do nothing wrong. You wronged me. Why should I forgive you? You did it to me. And part of, listen, relationships are broken. Families are broken over stuff that was done. And because no one wants to be the bigger person, nobody forgives. So they bitter so long, they don't know why they bitter. Why you don't like Aunt Sally? I don't even remember. I just know I don't like her. Here's the next reason. Here's the next reason. Hold on, hold on. Because oftentimes we're hurt by the same people we helped. Listen, Jesus came to earth to provide a model for living according to God's command. Jesus did nothing since he's been there but heal the sick, raise the dead, 
help the lame to walk, help the blind to see, help the mute to talk, help the deaf to hear. Did nothing but taught love. And guess what? They crucified. They crucified my savior and nailed him to, you know the song, they did it. Yet he still says, forgive them. See, part of our problem is we don't want to forgive because we keep a record of what we did for people. How, how dare you want to do this to me when I was the one that, right? I, I was the one that gave you gas money. You want to clap back at me? I, I was the one that got you this job. Now you want to get promoted over me? We're bitter because we're keeping record. But Paul tells us that love keeps no record. Okay, yeah, I want to, all right, all right. Here's the last thing. I'm, I'm done with this section, right? Why is it so hard to forgive? Because the offenders never offer apology for their own offense. That, that, that's another reason. We don't like to forgive because we're waiting on them, right? Gary Chapman, who produced love languages, also produced apology languages. And there are five apology languages. And, and one of the apologies, well, several of them require that the offender own their offense. Walker, they want, they, if, if that's your apology language, you want the person to say, Walker, I stole the lawnmower out your front yard. Right? You want them to own it. Yes, I took that $5 out your purse. Yes, I hit your car. Right? But can I tell you that oftentimes people ain't never going to own what they did? See, they ain't going to own it. Right? They, 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 Nicole, Get used to it. Some there are people who never think they did you any wrong. And you waiting, you might as well wait for Jesus to come back if you're waiting for them to ask for forgiveness. Right? Because they ain't gonna do it. But then I wrestled. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. So who's the them? Well, well here's part of the them. First part of the them is the past that got us in the predicament. Hold on. Jesus is on the cross, not because of something he did. He's on the cross for what had already been done, right? Since the creation of earth, mankind has, has had an inability to follow God. They kept breaking God's heart. So God sent God's self wrapped in flesh for the purpose of showing and modeling what living right looks like. And they didn't like living right so bad that they crucified the epitome of living right. But you know what? That just means, and he still said, Father, forgive them. In other words, sometimes you just got to forgive them who hurt you in the past, right? Some of you right now just need to do one sweep of I forgive them, right? Some of you are holding grudges that are 10 years old, 15 years old, 25 years old. Some of y'all fights go back to three, four decades ago. You bit about something somebody did on the playground. I, I'm, I'm reading, I'm reading um, Viola Davis's Finding Me. And, and, and one thing about a memoir is that you have to be specific about your timeline. God, I love this. Oh, God. Because he, here's what I learned for many of us. Viola Davis had to forgive herself, her six-year-old self. Really, really what she found out in therapy, she said, this chapter one, I, I'd encourage you to read the book. She said, she's been holding her six-year-old self hostage as being a letdown, not realizing that her six-year-old self was strong enough to get her to her 53-year-old self. Okay, okay, let me see if I can bring that to Sometimes the person we need to forgive is ourselves. We've been holding ourselves liable and uh, responsible for the decisions we're dealing with now? Let that go. Okay, all right, y'all quiet. I got you, I got you. Maybe that's not positive because we've been taught that, you know, we got to, we're re old wretched man. But the reality is, as was said in faith school, some of the stuff, everything we go through is God allowed or God commanded. So whatever you went through, God needed you to go through it. God wanted, God had you go through it to develop you. It didn't kill you, it developed you. And sometimes you just need to say, I, listen, I forgive you. Yeah, you, you was kind of ratchet back in the day, but I forgive your ratchet self. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm not gonna go any farther because y'all ain't really with me. And, and maybe y'all ain't do nothing wrong, but sometimes I got to forgive the Hennessy drinker that was me. I talked to me. 
So sometimes, listen, you smoked it, but I forgive you for smoking. Right? I, I know I, I can't look back there because they don't want to be real with me. You, 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 you hopped around. You, you, I forgive you. Sometimes you just got to forgive yourself. Okay, Marcus, it's rough. I see you. I need to get that fan too. Cause I, he, he, he. the second group you need to forgive, the second part of the them is those who are current contributors. He was forgiven. Not only was he forgiven the people who got him on the cross, but he was forgiven those who were nailing his hands to the cross right then. And sometimes we got to forgive those who are hurting us right now. Here's what the text says. The text says this, catch it. New, the passage translation says, while they were nailing him, Okay, okay, okay. He was praying. Nicole, you heard that? Wow. Rochelle, you heard that? Wow. Okay, okay. Maybe let me come over here. Walker, you hear that? Wow. Right? You, you hear Th Thomas and Theodore, y'all, yeah, wow. In other words, when they threw him on the ground, he was praying, Father, forgive him. When, when, when they hammered the nail in his hand, he was praying, Father, forgive him. He was doing it as they were doing. Look at. We always say he, he, he didn't mumble a mumbling word, but no, he was praying, which means sometimes we pray secondly, we cuss first. No, no, no. Instead of cussing, pray, right? While they're doing it, when they cut you off in traffic, instead of holding up that finger, pray, right? When your elevator break roll and it's hot on the elevator, instead of going off on your supervisor, pray, right? When you get to work, and you get that slip to tell you to go back home, don't, listen, don't show your tail. Don't, 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 don't show him the hospital gown. Don't, no, 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 you pray. Father, forgive them. <laughs> That's Chester Baldwin, as you said, trust in the light, as you walk in with that gown with all your back out. No, don't do that. Y'all gotta watch, this, listen to the song later, Never mind. I was in my own head. Here's the last reason. Why, who's the them? Those whose future offenses are just as offensive. Jesus didn't just pray for them there. Jesus saw through time and eternity and prayed for us. Because Jesus knew that we would mess up. Jesus knew that we were just as fail, frail and fickle and funny acting as them that were around the cross. And he died not, see, if we say Jesus died for our sins, we can't think that he didn't forgive us in that moment for our sins too. Catch it. That means Jesus knew. Sharp, Jesus knew. And he still forgave. Which means we got to already know people are going to hurt us. That, that ain't the last person that's going to hurt you. So just go ahead and have a forgiveness on your tongue. Just, just go ahead and keep a forgiveness in your pocket. Keep a, I forgive you in my pocket because you know somebody. Listen. Okay. I, I, I'm done. I'm done. I, I'm done. Here's the last thing. Why did Jesus forgive? first reason Jesus forgave, I, I believe, is to veil God from the releasing God's vengeance. Remember, this is God's son on the cross. Jesus said, Father, forgive him. Now, Matthew chapter 26, verse 53 says that when Peter cut off the ear of the high priest servant, that Jesus said, listen, do you not think my father is not capable if I cry out of releasing 12 legions of angels? That's 72,000 angels. But on the cross, Jesus said, listen, God, I got this. I got this. Forgive him. Like, in other words, I'm holding God back from releasing the fullness of God's vengeance. Listen, that's why you forgive. You forgive because you understand they just messed up and you really don't want God to get them the way God could get them. Because if you really cried out, God could wipe them out. Okay, y'all ain't with me. Y'all, do you, listen, they really don't know who they playing with. That, that's really the thing you got to remind. I'm forgiving you not because I'm weak. I'm forgiving you because you really don't know who you playing with. If I say it, God will do it. Okay, okay, okay. I, I thought I had some help. Here, here. Why, why did Jesus forgive? To constantly be strengthened in the face of suffering. It says he prayed, Father, forgive them at each blow they issued. So to keep Jesus on the cross, to keep Jesus from walking away from the pain, Jesus prayed. Jesus prayed because praying allowed him to replace the suffering with strength from God. Woo -hoo -hoo. Listen, the reason I pray for forgiveness 
is so that God can replace my suffering with strength. The, the reason I forgive is because I realize that if I don't forgive, I'll, call, I'll fall victim to my flesh. I got to forgive because you don't want to see me without forgiveness. I still know how to cut and cuss and shoot, but forgiving, forgiving keeps me from doing those things, right? Right, Nicole? You still got a little thug in you, but the more you forgive, the more you keep from having to put the Vaseline on your face. You keep from having to pull the hair back in a ponytail. It's not weakness, it's really the release of strength. Why, why did Jesus forgive? Because Jesus saw future beyond our faults. Jesus knew that if he didn't forgive, that he, he understood that the act that they were doing was flesh acts. They were just mistakes. They were just moments, that's it. They were just moments. The people that hurt you, those were just bad moments. In fact, the times we hurt God, if God really didn't see future beyond our fault, we would have been dead, right? The, the fact that we can breathe beyond our mistake the fact that we can breathe beyond our difficulty shows us that God sees beyond our fault. Isn't that what the song says? He looked beyond my fault and saw my need. I shall forever lift my eyes toward Calvary. Listen, the reality is Jesus knew that this mistake wasn't the end of the story. And we got to know that when people hurt us, it's not the end of the story. Listen, I've been with y'all a little too long, so I'm done. Here's the last thing. The reason Jesus forgave is simply this, to model what ministry looks like to ensure manifestation. <laughs> God, listen, I didn't catch this. I didn't catch this until you remember that Luke, Pam, is also the writer of Acts. Okay, 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 okay. So, so, so Luke is the writer of Acts. Acts is the recorder of Pentecost. Okay, okay, hold on. I, I'm, I'm going to slow down. In Luke chapter 6, Jesus writes about loving those who hurt you and forgiving those. you love your enemy. Uh, pray for those who hurt you. Do good to those. Forgive those, right? He talks about forgiveness. Then we get to uh, the cross where he models it. He forgives everybody. But then we get to Acts, and we find out that if Jesus didn't forgive in Luke, there probably wouldn't have been an Acts. Okay, 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 I'll try not to run. Um, when I look at the story, you got to remember, these 120 that were in the upper room were brutalized and bothered because nobody but them believed. And so they're in the room. And in the room, they have to release part of what they're praying is. Jesus tells them to go wait there, just tarry there, right? And in their tarrying, they have to release some things. And the text says they are with one accord, right? Which means their minds are fixed on the same thing. And when they get to that place, hold on, here comes the sound of a mighty Russian wind. Here comes cloven tongues. Here comes the glossolalia, the speaking in foreign languages. Hold on, don't, don't miss it. Because the people they're talking to are probably the same people who were there 50 days prior saying crucify him, crucify him. Okay, y'all not with me. Remember, these were Jews from all over. The Jews that didn't believe in Christ, but they're back for the Feast of Pentecost, right? They're, 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 they're back for this festival. See, Pentecost ain't a spiritual day. Pentecost is a Jewish feast, right? So they're back on this day, and now the opportunity has come for them to talk to new people, the same people that are part of the reason they've been hiding, but because of forgiveness, they're able to talk to them. Because Jesus forgave on the cross, Peter could forgive in his heart. And when his friends from Judea started talking trash about them being drunk, he could say, I, we're not drunk as you suppose, because it's only nine o'clock in the morning we are just fulfilling Joel's prophecy. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let, let me tell you, the reason Jesus forgave is so that we could operate in forgiveness so that when we get in the face of people who are persecuting us, who are hurting us, who are downright trying to destroy us, 
we can forgive them and still love them and still preach Christ to them so that they can change their lives. Because these same 3,000 that he was preaching to eventually, well, not all, this the rally is, he was preaching to more than 3,000, but 3,000 of them heard it and decided to give their life to Christ. But if Jesus didn't forgive on the cross, Peter wouldn't have seen a model of forgiveness and might, you know, Peter might have fought, might have cut, might have stabbed instead of speaking up. The reason you forgive is because Jesus forgave. Ah, listen, I'm going to push it. And I never told you the title of the sermon, but here we about to go. And I'll probably get put out, but it's good. <laughs> here we go. So Jesus didn't forgive them himself. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. In other words, yeah, turn all the sound off. <laughs> In other words, Jesus said, F them. Forgive them. Jesus said, F them. And I'm just trying to tell you, sometimes you got to just say F them. Forgive them. But hold on, because I don't really believe that's all he did, because he gave it to God. And in giving it to God, God can take that F and make it so many other words. God, God can take that F and fix them. God, God can take that F and fill them. God, God can take that F and free them. God, God can take that F and make them fruitful. Oh, God. God, God, God can take that F and fulfill them. God, God, all I'm saying is just give it to God. Father, F them in whatever way you choose to use the F. You use it so that you get the glory. I know that might have been rough for you, but I told you it ain't really a bad word. But if you just forgive them, you give it to God and let God handle the rest. However God wants to deal with them, you've released them from your hand. You release them from the pressure of trying to do it and fix it yourself. Father, F them. It's in your hands now. Let's give God a hand of praise. See, part of the problem is we don't want to forgive. We don't want to give it to God to do because we want to have control over the outcome. I'm going to make them apologize. No, you're not. Walker, if they ain't apologized in the last 35 years, they ain't going to apologize now. They probably ain't going to apologize to their deathbed, and by that time, what good is the apology going to do? Right? Just go ahead and forgive. release them from it. Yeah, they did you wrong. Forgive them. Yeah, they broke your heart. Forgive them. Yeah, they stole your money. Yeah, they swindled you and manipulated you. Forgive them. Yeah, they went left when you told them to go right. Forgive them. They may even cost you some money, but it's not worth your peace of mind. Just forgive them. F them. Listen, I, I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know who's watching, but somebody here, first of all, has been wrestling with unforgiveness. This ain't about coming to Jesus. This is about laying that name on the altar. There's some situation, some person that has hurt you so deeply that you have been unable to, you've been harboring it. And God says, this is what I want you to do. Listen to me. This ain't no public spectacle. You ain't got to type repent in the chat. God simply wants you this week to write their name on paper. Take that paper and throw it away. The throwing it away is your releasing it. The throwing it away is you taking it off of you. You write it down. You release in your ink on that paper. You're releasing all the memory of it. You're releasing the pain from it. And you are discarding it and giving it to God. You know, once you put your trash in the trash can and you put it outside and the trash man take it, you no longer are responsible for it. I know that because once I lost my wallet and threw it away, I could no longer find it. Right, because it ain't mine no more. You give it to somebody else. So give that hurt, that pain, that rejection to God. Just throw it away, all right? 
Here's the second invitation. Maybe you need Christ. Maybe you don't know this God who modeled forgiveness. If that's you and you need to give your life or you're interested in learning more, right? Because salvation is scary. You've heard so many different things about it. So if you're just interested in finding out more about salvation, about Jesus and giving your life what that means, then right where you are, if you're in the building, raise your hand. But if you're watching online, type in the comments or the chat the word saved. That is simply an indication that you want to know more about salvation or you want to give your life to Christ. Second invitation. Well, that's the second one. Just the third one. I encourage you to, if you have a relationship with Christ, but you've strayed away. In other words, you've saved, right? You gave your life to Christ, but you've strayed away. You stopped praying and this unforgiveness has caused you so much bitterness, you've stepped away. If that's the case, then right where you are, just type in the word restore. Or if you're in person, raise your hand that you want to be restored to God. You want to restore your relationship to God. Next, maybe you just need a church home, right? You, you, you're good with God. You're in right relationship, but you don't have a place where you can grow. You're not attending anyone's Bible study. You're not uh, going and participating in anyone's outreach ministry, but you, you know God wants you to grow roots. You want your family to be in church together. If that's you and you want to join the Word of Faith Church Intergalactic, then simply type in the chat, join, or if you're in the house, raise your hand. That's simply a sign that you want to be a part of what Word of Faith is doing and what God is doing in this place. You want to be loved on by the people of God, participate in the work of God, um, learn about the power of God, right? Any of those things can happen at the Word of Faith Church. All right, all right. Final, final invitation is for connection through contribution, right? If you want to contribute, so pay your tithes and offerings. If you're members of the church, you know you don't have to wait till Sunday to do it. Anytime the Spirit leads you, you drop it in the box or you hit one of the online giving platforms. But if this word spoke to you today and you want to sow a seed, maybe there's someone that you want to sow a seed in the name of, right? Or maybe there's just a piece of this word that you just want to sow to seal it. Just you can give using Givelify, Cash App, Raise Mobile, the website, placeoffaith.org. All right, Latia said save. Is that Latia or is that somebody in Latia's house using Latia's device? Just let us know. Type it in the chat. We love you. We love you. Welcome, whoever you are, to the Word of Faith Church. Amen. Amen. So that's my card. They give in the in the congregation. They're gonna be giving in the congregation. If you have it, you want to drop it in the basket. Drop it in the basket. All right. All right. All right. Listen, those who are watching in our intergalactic sanctuary, we thank you for worshiping with us. We simply ask right now that you. Um, Pray with us as we prepare to go. Those who are in our cyber sanctuary and who are in person, we're going to do our announcements and we're going to do our and we're going to do our communion, our Lord's Supper. All right. So those who are watching us, listen. God loves you. God wants you to begin to forgive. God modeled forgiveness to be the 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 standard. Right while they were crucifying him. He prayed over and over, Father, forgive them. So before you complain this week, before you fuss this week, before you fight this week, forgive. God, we love you. We praise you. We just ask that you touch everyone watching on Facebook Live. God, we just thank you. We praise you. We celebrate you. Keep them. For those that wrestle, with whatever they're wrestling with, give them peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, all right. Now those in the cyber sanctuary, listen, if you are...
All right, all right. Let's give Pastor Walker a hand. He keep me straight. Amen. Okay, three people gave you a hand. That means they they gonna fuss at you later on. Listen, if you're watching online, uh, who has a birthday this week? This week? This week? Anybody got a birthday this week? My sister's birthday is today. She 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 turns ancient today. AARP called her today. I hope she's watching at my mama's house. If not, then she'll fuss at me later. But my sister, Ella Frank Roslin Brafford, turns, has a birthday today. Anybody else got a birthday this week? We got over here. Timothy Yarborough's birthday in Ohio. What part of Ohio? What part of Ohio? Brunsburg. Reynoldsburg. All right. Tim Yarborough, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Any other birthdays? My brother's birthday is Thursday, the night. When's the night? When's the night? What's the day? The ninth is Thursday. It's Thursday. He's the baby of the group. You know you got a question when two babies from the same family get born the same week. You got to count back nine months and figure out what was happening that week. To figure out, mama, don't shake your head. Don't do that. <laughs> you know I done calculated it, though. <laughs> All right. Anybody got an anniversary this week? Anybody got an anniversary this week? No anniversaries this week? Okay. All right, listen. We want to thank everybody for your contributions for the laundry program. Uh, that was amazing. We got a chance to hit two laundry mats, and we're going to be going back to them again. This month, it's the Community Fish Fry. That's our project, the 25th of June. So we want to make sure that we make contributions. Some people have already made some contributions for the fish. Uh, we, we want to make sure we're able to give fish to, to people get full. We're going we're gonna to pray for a, a Matthew 14. Uh, we're going to pray for a, a, a John 6 kind of miracle where Jesus can take the fish and the five loaves of bread and people eat till they get full. Okay, y'all ain't excited. Okay, I don't want to just I don't want to just get a piece of fish. I want to eat till I'm full. Especially if it's good. Now, if it ain't good, then I'll just take a piece. But I know Minister Ron going to cook some good fish. And Elder Walker. Oh, and who else? Oh, and James. Okay. All right. Well, y'all make sure y'all put y'all foot in that fish. If I don't taste toenail, it ain't good. I'm joking. I'm joking for somebody called a D-heck on me or something. All right. Listen. Um, also, we begin with two weeks away from our we're two weeks away from our outdoor service the third Sunday we're going to do outdoor that's Father's Day and we're also going to do our promotion and graduation recognition on that day too that's the third Sunday outside that's the weekend before the fish fry we're going to do it outside next week the couples are supposed to be going bowling I hope you've registered because we're cutting it off so I can make sure that the shoes and stuff are covered for bowling next week. Singles, there was a announcement about what y'all want to do. Uh, we talked about going uh, putt-putt golfing, but if there's something else y'all want to do, just comment on there so we can make sure we have it planned. Yes, I understand. So that's enough for me saying that. I'm done. All right, uh, it's communion time. The Lord's Supper, I hope everybody has their communion 